Bannon Trails. You were the one who played Bannon Trails with me back in the day. Yeah. All right, we're gonna go another round, everybody. And I'll cut out most of that decision making out of YouTube so you guys are never gonna hear it. <laughs> um, oh God, I can't read any of this. Shit. Pacific Dunes, Dunes, so it's gotta be this one, right? Does it say on here somewhere? Shit, where's the say? Trails. Oh, oh, yep, all right, I picked the right, good. All right, Brandon and Mike, let's see what we got here. Let's pick Friday because I don't know what Thursday is and I don't care. Yeah, so it was stroke play. Skins must be next? No. Oh, oh you got to click it's it. It's a toggle for an extra option. Gotcha. Interesting. Um, yeah, I like 67 from the tips, unless you want to. Yeah, I like 67 from the tips. 67 is fine. Friday, 11, sea level. Force realistic. Hard fairways, normal greens. Screw your breezy. I'm still not masochistically taking breezy. Does that look good to you, Mikey? It's good to me. All right, Bandon Trails. So a reminder for all you people just tuning in or seeing this on YouTube, we're playing Bandon Trails. We're going to play for the board. Bandon Trails is on the board already at even par. So that means we got to play better. You got to play under par in order to get your name on the board for this one. But the advantage is Mike is in no danger of losing his plus three on this round. And normally I would not give Mike that option, but this is the second round we're playing today. And so I feel like that's appropriate because the second round's always harder. You just got a little bit more work to do. Swing gets a little bit more tired. All right, so I remember Bannon Trails fondly. I remember really liking this course when we played at Mike the first time. Yeah. There's a lot of undulation in the fairways. There's some undulation in the greens, but I remember thinking, there's a chance you could go low here. All right, good luck, buddy. Look, go get him. Um, for those of you who didn't tune in, me and Mike just got done playing around, and um, Piper. Piper. we, uh, it was neck and neck until the end. We were, there was a one shot between us going into the final hole. So it was a very good round. I saved it. Now find a piece of the fairway, please. Hard fairways, though. I assume that's gonna bounce. Oh, look at that bounce, Mike, yeah. Sit, yep, yep. Hard fairways. <laughs> Welcome to hard fairways. <laughs> Welcome to hard fairways. I'm gonna run into the house real quick. Okay. I'll be right back. Stay here, Piper. Stay here, Piper, I'll be right back. Hey, Piper. No, 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 no. Come on. Here, Piper, come here. Piper, come here. Come here. He'll be back. No, Piper, don't. <laughs> uh, looks like I gotta wait till Brandon gets back. <laughs> nope. Crap, did I open the door right in your swing? Sorry about that. <laughs> Worst thing about leaving here is I had no idea if, if you were swinging or not. I just opened the door. Well, uh, the other thing was is he was bouncing back and forth every time. Oh, I'd, really? I'd uh. get up to here, he'd be right there. It's like, oh. Kendo. <laughs> Why? Like all puppy dogs, right? He constantly feels like he's under threat of being abandoned. So my dog has a little bit of that, right? A little bit of what, what I would call separation anxiety, I guess. Hey. Get off the green, get off the green stuff. So my dog has a little bit of that too, but at the same time though, what I've learned 
after watching Piper here for what has now been, what, only two days? Um, I've learned that, uh, yeah, no, my dog is fine. <laughs> uh, because nothing, nothing passes for separation anxiety when you're a puppy. Like, my dog doesn't like being in the same room or being in the room by himself, but he'll deal with it. Yeah. Piper, though, not even a little bit. Yep, that's what I thought. Poke came around. Just sit there. Mm. All right, well, Michael will have to get up and down. Um, all right, now I'm, oh my God, seven degrees up here. What is going on? I don't know. I think he figured out what's in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's right here. I know it's there too, but apparently you, you do as well. Piper, come here. Piper, go by Mike. Come here. Go by Mike. Come here. Go by Mike. What the frick smelling dog? All right, I'm going to set it there. I don't have it in my pocket anymore. All right, one degree left. Come here, Piper. Piper. Come here. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Go be nice to Mike. We won't wait for the turn because otherwise you're going to be like this for the next hour. Sit. Sit. No. Stay. Stay. Is it gonna go far enough though with that eight degree up? Okay, go ahead. Oh geez, it went far enough and then some. Okay, well, I guess that wrong. I thought with eight degrees up, I was gonna have to hammer the crap out of that because it was gonna go straight in the air. It did, but not as much as I predicted, so. I hit it 102 and I, I did lose nine, but I needed to it was hit it last. Was right? What was that? Yes, correct. So you have a very tiny little dickhead tree in front of you, but in all honesty, probably not in play unless you're planning to go low. Too much. Nope. Oh, you hit something. I don't know what. I don't know if you hit that tree or what you hit, but you hit something. Because it went up and it kind of just sputtered. Shouldn't though. I was going to the left a bit. Hmm. There it was, there it was, there it was. Ah, just outside. All right, I'm gonna try to drink tonic water. Why? Because I think it's something that's got a strong flavor. Tonic water comes to mind. Was it good? Good grief. Although when Bill, so Bill gave me a bunch of these treats to give him yeah. and that was in there and that was one of the smaller ones. But I had that thought of like, considering how big he is and how much he gnaws, I gotta assume that's not gonna last a long time. And yeah, no, I was probably right. God, this thing's on a mound. Yeah, it is. This is like a clown hole here. I mean, somehow my putt is downhill, Mike. So I'm going downhill to that mound, I, apparently. Check that one out. See that giant crack on it? Oh. <laughs> yeah. That one wasn't gonna last much longer. Mm -mm. Yeah, boy, howdy. Gotta Sorry. start. I gotta recycle all these golf balls away, I think. Come on, turn, 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 turn. Oh, just too hard for that. Too hard for that line. Too hard for that line. That's what I should have did when I went in the house. I should have grabbed another dozen golf balls. All right, so maybe this is the last round with these until I throw all these recycle away and bring in a new set of golf balls. Logo pause. Mikey just caring about those sponsor dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, that's a long par three. Okay, so 128, but it's 13 down. That's still a long par three. All right, so what do we need here? What do we need here? The answer is, I guess we need a long iron. Holy moly. Yeah, yeah, buddy. This is a manly man's par three here. Mm, 13 yards downhill. I seem to remember this course being easier, but I don't know if I do, considering uh, this is a tough hole. Uh, so Dutch just asked what ball we prefer in the sim. That's a great question, actually, Dutch. So 
I try to find a ball that is close to performing to what we usually hit in real life. Yep. Um, that being said, I can tell you right now that Titleist golf balls don't last for shit in here. Me and Mike put too much spin with too many grooves and um, Titleist golf balls, we hit them like, me and him play them a half a round later, they're garbage. Um, so to answer your question very directly, I really like the same golf ball I hit in real life. Uh, which is largely what we have in here, although not really. I still have a bunch of Titleists in here. But you can't read a single logo on any one of these goddamn Titleists because they're all dead. But um, the Strixon Z-Star um, is what I play in real life. And they, they tend to be the ones that have held up the best in here. So... Yep, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah, so me and Mike play Strixons in real life all the time. Um, and I, I generally speaking just really like them. They hold up, they still produce spin. I still feel like I'm not giving up anything on the tee. Um, so yeah. Come here, Piper. That's been largely what I've done. I'd love to find something cheaper. So I don't know, Dutch, if you have a recommendation for something that's a little cheaper. Uh, but I, I've been buying them by the, the, the dozens, so. Oh, that's a pull. Hang on, catch a piece. Catch any piece of it. Catch any piece of it. Set, 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 set. Oh, that was a great bounce. He plays, um, <laughs> he plays both as well. <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. Okay, fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah, I think they're a hidden gem. So I, um, this is inside baseball for me, but I um, uh, buy logo golf balls now lately because it's a tax write-off for my business, right? <laughs> so basically I... Uh, Probably shouldn't be saying this for the IRS. Kid, but like, <laughs> so basically, I buy logo golf balls with my company's logo on them. Um, and so I buy them online, and therefore I buy them like in bulk, right? Like I'm buying 140 or 280 golf balls at a time. Um, so that allows me to play my golf ball, and I don't have to mark it, right? Because it's got my logo on it, and I'm the only one who has these. Get out. Oh, I tried. Oh, you're going to be at 12 degrees left, 9 degrees down. That's a nightmare shot. So, yeah, so I have a lot of that. and uh, But, yeah, you'll have to let me know. So, um, Mike, he said that he just brought some uh, Strixon soft feels to try in the sim because they're a little cheaper. So, you'll have to let me know if they hold up Dutch. I think that's the key for me. Have to aim off the green. So Bill gifted me too, by the way, I can rule these out. Bill's a Costco guy, so he gifted me a dozen Kirklands for in here, and they lasted maybe two hours. Nope. Mike, 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 I would argue that was pretty well judged, bud. <laughs> it's coming back even too, look at this. <laughs> look at this, it's coming back, folks. I saw the backstop. <laughs> nice shot, well played. <laughs> but yeah, let me know if those go well. Um, yeah, these Kirkland balls that Bill gave me, he gave me a dozen of them. And Mike can attest, I have most of them right here. Because uh, I pulled them out of the sim after they all got burned to death in like an hour and a half. I'm like, these things are dead. So, sometimes I will take golf balls out of rotation and take them to the real course. But I haven't done that in a while, which Mike can attest there's not a single one of these golf balls you'd want to hit on the real course. Like, we've literally pounded all the paint off these balls. So, but yeah. Yeah, I used to be like everybody else. I used to be a Titleist Pro V1X guy. But, I mean, I just drilled through them too fast. And Mike's in the same boat. Like, I think, I think they make more sense if you either, one, are willing to spend a lot of money and just like, I'm willing to replace these and I don't care. Or two, if you're a subpar enough golfer that you lose them fast enough that you don't really care. But in my case, a golf ball can last several rounds, and if it does, like, I need it to hold up with my wedge play. Yeah. And Mike's in the same boat as I am, so. Now with his illegal wedges. Not. See, that's another reason why I need to put a pitcher on the board so everybody can see that wedge group pattern and be like, what in the fuck is he swinging? You get some questions. You get some questions. All right, 19 feet or yards. Brandon. Yes, they are illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my they wedge. Do, they do make one. No, no, no. I get don't. it. My wedge looks like a wedge, Dutch. <laughs> Nerby's wedge looks like a science experiment. <laughs> um, 
Well, it's because it's the knockoff from. Um, <laughs> if you ask, if you ask Mike to put his wedge up to the camera, maybe he will. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you say there? I got I got the sim about a month ago, and Buddy bought over some TM Pixes, and they were uh, toasting like around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I have that same experience, and again, I. I don't mind um, a Titleist golf ball. I don't. Like, they're fine. I, I prefer the Pro V1X because, again, I need something with a little harder of a shell on it. But I can't play Pro V1Xs and expect that golf ball to last longer than a round if I'm playing well because it just won't. And in here, yeah. In here, I've had the exact same experience you have, which is that, in fact, Mike, Mike can see on my bar over here, looking on the corner there, I have some books. I have all my golf books out here on the bar. And they are currently being buttressed by, <laughs> by uh, two dozen golf balls on one side and two dozen on the other. And I think two dozen on one side are Pro V1Xs, and the other side are a bunch of TaylorMade or Title of something else. Softfields, maybe? But yeah, I would not bring that. They're brand new dozen balls, and I could throw them down here. But by the end of this round, we'll be throwing more than one of them away, I bet. It's just because me and him just put too much crap on them, so it's just not going to work. So yeah, there's an art, I think, to finding the perfect golf ball. Uh, two years ago, I tried Snells. And then I brought some Snells in here. And I didn't mind those. They weren't bad. But I mean, to be quite honest, they cost almost the same amount as my Strixons. And I've just been happier with the Strixons, so. Oh, no, way too hard, Mike. World's dumbest bogey. Oh, that's brutal. And for me, the Snells, they seem to, for me, too soft. Too soft. Okay, interesting. Do you remember which ones you played, Mike? Uh, I do not. Blue or black or? I don't remember, Kay. actually. Yeah, sure. Um, I had the blues. It is and a long time. I, the only reason why I even tried them, like, I wasn't one of those weirdos who, like, read the story about Snell and, like, got all engrossed. Um... I tried them just because, again, that place where I go, go for my mic, that place where I went for the logo um, had a ripping good deal on them once. So I was like, you know what, hey, for that kind of a deal, I'll give it a go. Um, and again, I didn't find they were bad. I just, I didn't like them enough to keep doing it. That was terrible. Oh my God, that was awful. Just a high ripper. Stay out of the deep, stay out of the deep. Stay out of the deep. Ugh. Who knows if the physics are going to let me get through whatever the hell it is we're going to call what's in front of me right now. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I would love nothing more uh, Dutch than to find a golf ball that I could buy here for like, you know, $12 a dozen and they would hold up in here. But um, I just don't know or don't believe any, any such thing really exists. Because, I mean, if it will hold up for that price, it's going to be because we can't spin it worth a damn. Welcome to Rock Flight. And I'm going in you. Don't roll. join me. I'm not a role model, Mike. Yeah, look at that. There's my ball, and there's Mike right next to me. I would argue Mike's better off, but not by a lot. Oh... Although I do have a bunch of throwback balls over there, Dutch, so you know what I could do? I could pull those out one day, Mikey. Yeah. How do you think we're going to play in the sim with Top Flight XL 2000s? <laughs> yeah. Dunlap Super Titanium. <laughs> Molitor Scary Long. Bolatas. Yeah. Oh, Z Bolata. Yeah, Z Bolata ain't going to survive. Shit, when I was in high school... I remember I could cut a Zibolata in a half a hole, right? Like one good wedge shot, and that was the end of that. <laughs> I don't know how anybody ever played those. Neither nice shot, I. Mike. Hey, Piper, stay out of there. Good. Neither do I. All right, so my question to you, Mike, is, is this thing in front of me got collision physics on it? That's yeah or nay? I... I have no way to know either, so we're going to find out, I guess. We're going to find out. If the answer is yes, then I'm really screwed. Because <laughs> to be honest, there's nothing really good I can do about it. No. Um, I'm not going to wedge out from here. I'm out 300 yards. I can't afford to wedge out. All right. Oh, I hit that good. And there were no collisions.
collision physics, so that works out good. Oh, I hit it too good. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, that's fine. All right, we got away with a shitty drive. All right, we're gonna have a wedge off. We're gonna have a wedge off, bro. We took my dog fence down. So you're stuck inside now. Heaven forbid we walk over that, that two foot dog fence. That's a lot of work. Nope. Well you said no, and yet I think you build me again there. Nice shot. Yeah, no, I know you hit like garbage. That's why you build me. Contact sucked. But and we keep saying billing because <laughs> Bill's got this habit, mostly with the putter, but he's got this habit of hitting a shot and going, I hit that shot terrible, and it is, and then it like goes in. Like he hits a lot of putts where he's like, oh God, I pulled the shit out of that, and then he buries it in the heart. Does that a lot. So shout out to Bill, but you know, hey, if he was here, he could stop me from talking shit. <laughs> All right, 94, obviously I'm playing for a Mondo pole here. And internet, that's not possible. <laughs> okay, did not Mondo pull it. I'm gonna be right next to Mike. All right. All right, Mike, it almost looks like we're golfers. What the shit? Yeah, if you scratch those first three holes. I know. <laughs> I know, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, if you and I would have, well, in your case, you needed to scratch those holes. In my case, I just needed to putt a little better. Had I done that, I'd have been fine. But that's all right, I can get it back here, get back to even, which would be great. All right, so we got 10 feet, level, dead level putt. I mean, it doesn't get much easier than this one. And I missed it. Oh my God, break this frickin' Scotty over some hard object. Oh my God, Mike, should be one under par. Instead, I'm one over par because I can't make the world's dumbest putt. Piper, cheer me up. Cheer me up because I can't putt. <laughs> Come here and cheer me up because I can't putt. I can't putt, man. Huh? At least Mike can putt. Hey, look, somebody who can make a putt. Nice birdie. All right, we're tied at plus one. Brandon can't putt, and Mike can't play golf early in the round. <laughs> but we go to four. And we're, so like the last round though, for those of you who've, like Dutch who have hung on long enough here, like the last round we played, we're still within, you know, I mean, it's three holes in, like there's time. We have plenty of it. We're not out of reach. Nobody's done anything catastrophic here. So I remember this hole, Mike, this is the one with that giant hill in the middle. Yeah. And if you can hit it to the left, you'll be up on the mound, and if you can't, you'll be down in the lower. Piper trying to win the back off challenge. Mike will be on the lower deck. But nothing wrong with that. Like, there's no real advantage to being on the other side, as far as I can tell. In real life, maybe, because in real life, you like... see what you're shooting at. Exactly. 100% <laughs> right. Just like for those of you who want to go to YouTube and check out our Wilderness at Fortune Bay round, that's a good example of another golf course where it's like, in real life, not seeing where you are going is a real problem, but in the sim, it's a big nothing burger. Oh no, yep, yeah, I'm gonna be down with Mike. Definitely felt like I did not close that face. But again, Hey, there you are, but nothing wrong with that. In the sim, you're fine. All right, what do we got? You first, 143 level, believe it or not. So obviously it, go, it goes up a big hill and then comes back down a big hill. All right. All right. Good dog. My 
Can it catch a piece? The answer is yes. And got a good release off what is obviously a big hill there. Mike will have another birdie attempt. So what it's all about at a course like this is just giving yourself birdie attempt after birdie attempt, pouring some pots. Oh, way right. Fuck. Golly, left that way fucking open. All right, so remember what I just said about birdie attempts? Yep, I can go fuck myself because apparently I am the opposite of that. Dang it. Oh my God, and then I leave myself this, whatever we're gonna call this, little shot. Yuck. All right, well, anything inside the circle here is a big ass win. 18 feet down a steep hill. Piper. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's fine. Even though you were distracted, he tried to. Hyper Dog wins the back off challenge. Oh boy, Mike is left with a real disgusting bit of business here. <laughs> Piper trying to win the back off challenge. I caught you. I caught you. You're caught it. So, speaking of things that are challenging, uh, so last year in season one, of course, we did the Hot Ones Challenge. By the way, you can go find that on YouTube if you want to watch us eat hot sauce and suffer. It is the only video on YouTube that we've actually edited for people's pleasure. Um, but, so I got the idea for that challenge based on a Bob Does Sports video. Bob Does Sports being a YouTube channel that I follow. Um, the reason why I mention that now, so Bob Does Sports does a bunch of these and they just did one of these challenges this week. Christmas challenge, and you know what it was, Mike? Hmm. It's maybe the most disgusting thing you could think of. Can three guys play in a scramble, a nine hole scramble, and shoot five under par? Which is pretty easy, right? But as a group, they need to eat 50 chocolate chip cookies in nine holes. That doesn't sound bad, right? Like between three guys, 50 chocolate chip cookies? A little un uncomfortable? A little bit. Each one of them also has to drink, drink a gallon of milk. Jesus. And that's where I'm like, okay, this stops being fun and starts to become disgusting. Yeah. And yeah, go look at it. If you, all right, so Dutch, looks like Dutch probably saw that episode. If you, <laughs> that looked brutal. It was, <laughs> and they, so they did the thing that you would expect them to do too. They got the gallon clear jugs. So as they're driving down the fairway, you see how much is left, and it's like, no, no, no. Two holes in, and you got this much left. It's like, no, <laughs> no. Uh, in their defense, they got it done, too. But, <laughs> ugh, oh my god, brutal. I would not even agree to such things. There we go. I think that might be a little short. Coming back to the pen. Maybe it's coming back to the pin. Oh. oh, look at this with a little spin. Yeah. Nice shot, Mike. Mike is turning it on. There we go. Yeah, it, yeah, I would not, I wouldn't sign up for that nope. in a million years. The moment you told me a gallon of milk is the moment I'm like, nope, nope. <laughs> I mean, I have a sweet tooth, and even then, like, no, no. Piper, come here. Drinking a gallon of milk in two hours oh, just has got to be. Piper. Woof. Come here. Go to Mike. Go to Mike. Come here. Go to Mike. See, so, yeah, I wouldn't do it. Would not do it. Come here. No, Piper. He doesn't have any more. <laughs> I really don't. Oh, that's definitely gonna be right and probably short. Yep, all those things. I mean, still on the green, although I'm on the wrong no, tier of the green, obviously. But yeah, no, I would not sign up for that. They've done some, they've definitely done some ones that I would not do. Uh, the Hot Ones Challenge I thought was Jesus H. Oh my God, no wonder it came back, Mike. <laughs> wow, wow, boy. That was a good time for you to hit a really good shot there. That was a really bad time for me to hit a piss poor shot. Uh, but no, the uh, they did that one where it was, I think, 50 Taco Bell tacos in nine holes. That oh, one also was, my God. that one was also pretty brutal to watch. No, thank you. They did, uh, um, 
you know, everyone has to eat nine hot dogs in nine holes. Oh. That one was pretty bad. Oh. And I mean, as you can imagine, almost all of those end with somebody vomiting. Yeah. All right, so 61 feet, Mike, three fucking feet uphill. Piper, come here. Wowzers. So this is not, I mean, if I do this right, I'm long. If I do it right. Yep, and I'm going to be long. Okay, that's fine. That's ideal, even, I would argue. I mean, yeah, it sucks that Mike's shot is essentially exactly as far as I'm away after I hit onto the green and putt. But, I mean, look at down that hill. If you look down that hill right now, it's like you can't even see anything below it. It's like it's, oh, oh my God, Mike, going off the edge <laughs> into nothingness. So, yeah, brutal. Just brutal. Oh, just overplayed the, you had a, well, you pushed it maybe a little, but I mean, that was a decent putt. Yeah, the other one they have that I don't like is they have one where they, I don't remember what they call it, but basically it's a wheel of doom, and you have every hole on the tee box, you flip this wheel, and you have to drink whatever it lands on, and so sometimes it's tequila, and sometimes it's fireball, and sometimes it's um, a beer, oh geez. an entire beer, and so it's like, yeah, just as you can imagine, like, it gets pretty brutal to watch. You're like, this isn't fun to watch. Like, I don't tune in to watch YouTube golf to watch people vomit all over the place. Piper, come here. Why are you so attached to me? I know why. I mean, it's because I had that thing in my pocket, but. All right, eight and a half. All right, Brandon, make one putt, huh? On this freaking second nine. There you go. Finally. Oh, finally, Mikey. Brandon's got a putting deficit. All right, Mike keeps the box. We go to six. We're both still in striking range. So this is what I remember the last time we played this golf course, Mike. I remember very distinctly these holes like this where it's like you would need a caddy in real life to tell you like, hey, I'm aiming over a sea shit. Where should I be aiming? Yeah. Hey. Hey. That didn't sound particularly great. It'll work. But yeah, I mean, you'll be right in that valley where I think about everybody probably lands on this hole. Pretty giant middle ridged valley right in the middle of the fairway here. That sounded horrid. It, it did. Like I don't know why. I, well, I know why because I have the picture. Um, it's because you caught a little thin. Sounded it, like I fucking cracked the face off. It feels like every time you catch that thing a little thin, that like for some reason, like it's making a pretty atrocious sound. I hope it's not because you have a developing issue with your driver. That'd be no, no bueno. Oh, big pull, but it's cutting, so I'm going to get away with it, I bet. Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll be down in the valley with Mike. There's Mike's ball, and there's Brandon bounding right by it. So I'll make him go first. All right, so Mike will have 114, and I will have 102. I like 102. That's a great yardage for Team Me. <sighs> so, for those of you that might be curious, can I taste this tonic water? And the answer is about 10%. It's the exact same thing as whiskey. Like, can I taste I'm drinking tonic water? Maybe. On the other hand, if you poured this into a blind cup and told me what was it, I probably wouldn't be able to properly identify it. Which is actually pretty crazy, because again, tonic water has a pretty distinct flavor. You're not gonna mistake that for a lot of other things. Nope. Right, right, yep. Yep, just based on the impact on the, on the uh, screen. So yeah, we will not be doing coming soon to a theater near Frostbite Golf a watch as Mike and Brandon have to drink a gallon of milk during a round because that'd be pretty pretty horrifying. Hey, hey, out of here. <laughs> out of here. You like golf balls. I know you do. You always told me about that. Hey, get out of there. Get out of there, you golf ball thief. All right, 102. Come here, Piper. Come here. You're gonna hit, what am I? hit with the golf club. <laughs> Big 
big pole. Oh, not as big as I thought. Oh, I'm way short though. Look at this. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, crap. All right, that's fire. I'll have a birdie putt, just not a good one. I need to give myself better opportunities though on the holes where you have wedges in your hand, right? Like, those are the ones you gotta do something with. All right, so 6.7 degrees right. Yeah, but the problem is, is it's gonna hard bounce to the left. I agree. Nothing like, and, and Mike is a billiards player, nothing like calling your shot. <laughs> We're like, this is what's gonna happen, and then that's exactly what goes down. Always feels good. We still gotta get that done one of these winters, Mike. Yeah. We keep saying we're going to, and we never do. But one of these winters, me and Mike have to play some billiards against each other, and Mike can whoop my ass. Because I get the impression that Mike is a much better billiards player than I am. I'm not horrible, but I don't think I'm as good as Mike is. I'm just speculating. Piper, come here. All right. Come back, come back, come back. Ah. I'm just, I mean, that was a good putt, too. I'm just, oh, I'm over-reading the beginning of the putt, and I'm under-reading the end of the putt. No. No, I'm sorry. Other way. Other way. I'm under-reading the beginning, and I'm over-reading the end. Just not sharp with that putter right yet. Ooh. That was a long one. All right, so we go to seven. Seven is a longer par four. Mike and Brandon, um, keeping it interesting. We're definitely playing the same kind of game today. We're doing different ways to get to our birdies and different ways to get to our bogeys, but... Uh, but yeah, it's been close all day and it continues to be. Playing the same kind of thing today. Oh, so what you people, viewers, probably didn't hear at that moment was somebody in my construction zone there uh, slammed his car door right in Mike's backswing. <laughs> nice back off. That should work just fine. I don't know what's going on here. Not your best, but it'll get the job done, I think. And I mean, everything, it still made that funny sound though. I know. Like every drive you hit now practically is making just that god awful sound. I mean, in that one there, I mean, you hit that one high in the face is what happened there, but it was a strike. I mean, it was in the center. Do you have your, well, hit. Do I have my what, my wrench? Yeah, yeah, I do, absolutely. I'll find it for you in two secs. I've got two of them in the house here, as a matter of fact. One in my bag and there's one over there on the shelf. Oh, really? Interesting. Um, and by interesting, I mean I can go fuck myself. Interesting. I did not think I left that open. I did. The unicorn don't lie. All right, let me find your wrench for you. I've got it. Oh, it seems loose, but. Oh, remember what cigars are like? Yeah. Pepperidge Farm remembers. I got a lot of them. I haven't had one. I probably wouldn't be able to taste any of those either. Probably not. <laughs> Although now would be a great time to do or, it because I wouldn't be able to smell it anyways. I wouldn't need to take a shower afterwards or anything. Okay, where'd you go? Or it'd actually wake up your senses. Yeah, maybe it'd like <laughs> make everything actually work. Oh, there we are. There you go, bud. Thank you. Yeah, I knew it was in here somewhere. So why do I always carry a wrench in my bag? Um, <laughs> Uh, in case you're curious about where I always kept a wrench in my bag, um, yeah. I always carried it because um, I was at uh, Whistling Straits Irish course once, um, the last time I took a vacation, which was, as I indicated earlier, fucking two, over two years ago. In any event though, um, I was at the Whistling Straits Irish course and uh, I didn't have my uh, wrench with me and my driver started to come loose during the round and it kept getting worse and worse and worse to the point that I was swinging it, me and my caddy thinking it was going to break. And it didn't break, but the last hole is a par five and I had to hit a three wood on that par five because I didn't hit the driver because I figured I was snapping it. So ever since then, I carry my wrench now at all times. Oh, big pull. Big pull. 
I mean, considering that I hit my drive four. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if GS Pro wants to add something fun, right? What would be fun would be as if there were other people on the golf course. So there'd be guys who'd be ducking. <laughs> like that'd be like, I, I realize that. Why would you want that? I don't know. Anything like that that's interesting for me would be funny. <laughs> Some guy sitting there spills his beer. It's like, what the? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, yes, I would find that entertaining. <laughs> short I instead blasted mine like an idiot man all right so I just banned operation idiot bag McGee there so yeah. sorry but not uh, that one. <laughs> not okay to use our chat channel for whatever yes I could put on the moderation more heavily and that would stop people but I mean I don't want to do that why do that I don't want to do that that's dumb so so yeah don't do it Yeah, look at that. Look to the right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no doubt. <laughs> like, but I also buried half the club in the mat. <laughs> All right, so I've got 41 here. Normally I wouldn't fly this, but I think I'm gonna try to do it today. Is that enough? Is that enough? It is not gonna be enough. Should be. Not gonna be oh, enough, Josh Short. I, 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 it felt like it wasn't enough, so that's that's fair. But at the same time, the way I'm putting right now, Mike, I don't even want those six footers. <laughs> like I got a bad case of the miss the little little guy putts going on right now. Piper dog. Mike's got to get over that rise, which he did. Oof. So at least he did that. He knew he didn't hit it hard enough, but <laughs> he did the one thing he absolutely had to do, which was he got over that rise. I do vaguely remember this green now that I see it, Mike, because it has another tier that rises Something again. Back, yeah. Yep. I don't remember where the pin was last time we played. I don't need it. Because, uh, I mean, I, there's just no way to know. I mean, I could find out, right? All I have to do is go to YouTube and find this first round. I'm sure it's on the stream somewhere, but... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, and Mike's got to putt again up that hill. No fun. Yeah, I mean, look at just the precipice we're standing on looking down that fairway. Two inches Reminisces. and six feet. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that is a speed demon of a putt. There you go. Damn it. All right, so now I got to putt it across that, that ridge that Mike just putted straight down, which means I've got a giant breaking five-footer. Fucking pull the shit out of that, dude. Jeez. Okay. I pushed that, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Felt it. Okay. All right. Well, feels like we're kind of just hanging on to hang on. But then we get a hole like this, right? Where you're like, all right, well, good. Let's yeah. take advantage and rip this golf course into rear end here, huh? I mean, this ain't quite drivable for me, probably, but I mean, it ain't far away. Stay off the green. Stay off the green, bud. <laughs> All right, let's see. Piper, come here. Go to Mike. Come in. Oh, I 
I saved that one. Don't need to call Bill and tell him that we cracked his. We killed his dog. Oh, Mike, I'm going to get to the green. Holy I'm going to be on the lower, what is an up? Well, I might not stay on the green, though. There's clearly a giant tier there. Yeah. Actually, you are. Uh, no. Stay. No, let me, I mean, I don't know. Beware <laughs> what you wish for. I might want to ship that. But. <laughs> All right, so I hit a 300-yarder there, Mike. Your move, sir. It's doable, apparently, after all. I didn't think that it was, but it is. Firm fairways help a lot, obviously. Firm fairways help a lot. All right. Mike's gonna give a ride too. That's not a good line. Oh, it's leaking too much. Will it blend? Will it blend? Will he get a good bounce cutting over? Yeah! I mean, you may be better off take than me. That one. <laughs> I was gonna say, you might be better off than I am. Um, I have a 75 foot putt, and who knows what that's gonna look like, but it ain't gonna look good. You are two yards, three yards further away, but you can chip it up that mound that I'm gonna have to putt over, so. Yeah, um, like any good responsible dog watcher, I had to know who uh, who Piper's vet was, and that helped that uh, Bill happens to use the same vet I do, which makes sense because I'm sure he would have asked me when I when he got his dog, like, who do I use? And I've had the same vet for Bizu the entire time we've had him, so. Too much. Yeah, I was gonna say that sounded firm to me. Yep. Come down that hill a little bit back. Oh, that's gonna be a nasty putt. I mean, it's, it might come back a little, but it ain't gonna come back much. Yeah, you ain't gonna like that putt either. Oh, God, hey, yeah. So it's for Eagle. That's the part that I have to, like, feel good about that. Feel good about the fact that this is an Eagle putt, even though it looks absolutely bloody disgusting. All right, so this is a double breaker with a ridge in the middle, and I've gotta make sure I'm on the right side of that ridge. Because it actually comes back the other way. A little bit. All right, 75. Two feet up. Two feet up, yeah. So it's more like an 85 footer. So again, if I'm long here, I'm happy with that. That's not bad. It's not a bad outcome. Oh, wow. Stop, 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 Oh my gosh, two putt, automatic two putt. Nice. Run, <laughs> run to the next tee, idiot. <laughs> run to the next tee, you big idiot. No, I, don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this one, but. Piper, come here. Good duck. sir <laughs> halfway there already i was already yakking about that one because it looked that good it looked really good it's close all right so long par par five coming at us here as piper we, as we come to hole number nine piper come here come on are we on schedule mike we are yeah go come here yeah needy yeah needy pupper dog all right. Now, is it going to stay out of that bunker? Yep, it will. I didn't hit it nearly hard enough to get all the way over there. Okay, good to know. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, there is no such thing as a flat level. <laughs> Why abandon trails, folks? No such thing. Yeah, so another thing about that stream song Black Round, Mike, we played on Course Recommended there, too. Yep. And it gave us firm, it didn't give us firm fairways, it gave us Lynx fairway, which is the step above firm. Yeah. And then it gave us Lynx greens. Oh, Jesus. So here's where Bill adapted much better than I did, and you can go back and watch the stream to see it live, but like, he, uh, he adapted better than I did because essentially you had to start landing the ball, you know, five or 10 yards short. Yeah. and let it rocket back up. 
And so, yeah, I had so many shots where I thought, oh, wow, I hit a really good shot here, and it just, you know, rockets by. A real challenge. Yeah, it'll be fine, though. No. Not what you wanted, but it'll be fine. Get out the beach towel, folks. There's me and Mikey right next to each other in the fairway. Both of us hitting a little bit of a slice of Rooney. So I don't know if either one of us has enough stick to get home. I mean, the only benefit you have going on here is, again, just the fact that these fairways are firm, which means if you can actually hit the ball straight into the fairway, you'll probably get a good 30 yards of rollout. Yeah. But it's still a pretty big ask. To be in the trees. Yeah, that's a no-no. That's no bueno. Jesus Christ, it's like wide open. All right, so that gives me pause about wanting to do this, but no, we're not going to. We're going to do this because this is still the shot. Like, there's a lot of room over there. Go by my. There's a whole lot of room. There's a lot of room there, and if you hit this thing, you've got a chance maybe at the very front edge of that green. Come here. There you go. Come here. You just have this thing that's sitting right in my back swing, right where I'm going to be transitioning. That's it. That's it. No. Oh, a big honking pole. Anywhere but the trees. Anywhere but the trees. Well, I got through that one, but again, I mean, I don't know if that's good. That's going to be a pretty yuck shot for me, too. Darn. Okay, well, that's fair. Yeah, today would have been a day, actually, Mike, now that I think about it, today would have been a day where we could have said, hell with this, and certainly could have Don't pulled out the uh, <laughs> pulled out the space heater, started up a rip and fire as it's 40 degrees. Okay. 40 degrees on the 29th of December. In North Dakota, guys, that's almost unheard of. In fact, to talk North Dakota weather turkey for two seconds, we're actually in a, where are we going? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're actually in a flood warning right now, which makes no damn sense. Uh, and yet that's kind of what the weather's done to us here. Instead of getting eight inches of snow on the ground, we got two inches of rain. So that's a guy who's played a few rounds of golf and knows, knows what he has to know. <laughs> Just cut your losses and get out. <laughs> well, getting up and down here and making a par is fine, right? On the, on the tee, yes, would you like to make birdie? Every time you step onto the tee, you want to make birdie, especially on par fives. But you take a par. <laughs> Coming back. It's good. Well, it didn't come all the way back down, so that's good news. Hey, what do you have on your butt? Hold still. Hold still, butt, butt dog. Come here. What do you got on your butt? What is that on your butt? Nothing. Okay, good. All right. 58. Come here, Piper. My nephew actually texted me here the other day and said, hey, between a 52, a 56, and a 60 degree wedge, what should I get? I'm like, what do you have right now? I only have a pitching wedge. I'm like, 56. <laughs> I'm like, get a sand wedge, that's fine. I'm like, do not get a 60 degree wedge. I'm like, if, if you're never used to hitting something like that, that's a mistake. Piper, <laughs> come here. 
All right, 58. Go, go, what in the hell? Oh my Lord. We don't want to talk about the contact on that shot because that is maybe the worst shot I've hit all day. That's saying something. Like 58 degree wedge in my, 58 yard wedge in my hand and I can't even find the green. That's pretty pathetic. Oh my God, Mike. 58 yards, two Vader wedges, and I can't even get inside the circle. So, Mike makes this putt or whatever. Not only does he have no blood, but to be quite honest, he might even win a stroke on this hole. And he punched his ball into the woods. <laughs> <laughs> but, we're, but we're even right here. Yeah. Even though I went for the green, it was, uh, it was 50 yards away. But two incredibly embarrassing bad for the brand wedges later. And that's happened. Too hard. Big Not hole. hard enough. Not hard enough up the hill, huh? Hmm. All right, so Mike makes bogey. Oh, like I rifled that one. And I'd like to think that I could win a bunch of strokes back, and that's not really even true. I gotta make this to get one back on him. This is just to avoid also boogering with him. Ah, it's embarrassing. All right, 12 feet, way uphill though. Way uphill though, so should I play less break is the question then. Let's play a little less break. All right, 12 way up the hill. Too hard, too hard for that line. Make a bogey, Jesus! The round that could have been, it wasn't. Yeah. We just, yeah. That's embarrassing. So how'd you do on that, uh, how'd you do on that uh, par three? It was only 50 yards. I bogeyed it because, you know, it took me four <laughs> shots from 50 yards away to find a fucking hole there. All right, that's fine. I deserve it. All right. Well, we're not gonna talk about what it is right now, and the reason why is because he already got into the beginning. I brought that thing out here thinking he was gonna get that later, and he figured me out. Hey, Piper, stay out of there. Come here, Piper. Come Piper, on. go over my mic. I know, man. Come here. All right. Time for back nine, Brandon, here, to pull his putter out of his rear end. Nope, thin. Just find a fairway, would you? Yeah, yeah, I hit that so poor. But uh, it's in the fairway. So I shall not complain. No, oh, we're gonna try something different here. Oh yes. Happy Gomer? Yeah. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I draw the line in the sim. I'm like, yeah, no thanks guys. I don't think containment is quite built to contain a Happy Gilmore-esque uh, big rip. What on earth did you do there? Eight degree left pole, seven degree, fucking seven and a half degree uh, launch angle? That was a bad beat. All right, well, you almost got out of trouble the first time. Let's see if you could do it one more time. Let me know if you need me to hit. Yeah, hit the back foot. B. I hit it. Yeah, okay. No, that can't be. Oh, there, there it goes. It just took a second. I was gonna say there was just no, no way that that one tree wasn't behind your ass. Yeah. Let me know if you when you're set and I'll hit it again. Okay. Oh, it's taking forever. Okay, there it is. That's it. I might hit it one too many times. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my computer is actually, the good thing is the stream has been fine. I've been looking at the stream numbers that I've been seeing a screen. My computer has kind of been dogging it. Yeah, I don't know why. Obviously something going on. All right. 
Well, that's a pretty good out there, partner. That is a pretty good out. So Nerby laterals out to safety, avoids the bunk. Now he's got a shot to try to rip himself something up by that green. Oh, you know what? We were talking before about, and I know Dutch, we were talking before about uh, those Bob the Sports Challenges. I remember another one. It was a dozen donuts, Mike, <sighs> in nine holes. Each, each person, which sounds awful, right? But then to make it worse, they went to the, sh they showed the video where they went to the, the bakery to buy the donuts. And yeah, one of the guys didn't understand what he was doing. So instead of just getting tiny donuts, he's like, oh, that looks good. I'll get one of those. Yeah, didn't take long to, he's like, oh my God, what was I thinking? <laughs> like, did I not understand the challenge? <laughs> Buy these giant jelly filled bear claws and shit. Oh, that's gonna take a nice kick for you too. That's a pretty good shot. All right, all right folks, we got to get our head out of our butt here and get some work done. We gotta get some strokes back here. Me and Mike got a little work to do. A reminder for anybody just tuning in, even is actually the number on the board. So that means if me and Mike want to be on the board for this round, we got to go under par. Be enough. Golly, just go, would ya? Fuck you, Brandon. Oh my lord. I might not be playing for under par. I might just have to be playing for trying to stay ahead of Mike because I don't know if I'm playing good enough to be under par. <laughs> I'm not putting good enough to be under par. And there it is, like 150 some yards. I took an extra club and then I just buried it in the turf. Like I'm surprised they didn't discover oil there under my garage. Good dog, Piper. Nope. Well, that firm fairway though, so I think you got better than you thought you were going to get. I mean, I agree with you, you needed to put more on it. All right, 23 freaking yards. Come on, Brando. Let's get one up and down here, bud. Huh? Kind of light a fire under my ass. Ah, or in, light a fire in your palate. <laughs> That's disappointing. Well, I got 22 feet for par after again finding a fairway. So my driver right now ain't my problem. <laughs> like I can find fairways. I can't hit a green to save my life. When I'm on the green, I don't know what to do with my putter either, but woo. All right, I gotta make this just to... Uh, I'm doing double. Ah, <laughs> so Mike's heading for the 60-some percent monster. <laughs> gotta do something, because it's a bold move. Bold move, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I gotta make my 22-footer just to hold serve at plus one, and then I still need to find a way to get two strokes back in the last eight holes. Not undoable, ladies and gems. Just gotta hunker down a little bit and hit some better shots. Ah, yeah, there we go. Hunker down and hit some better shots. I like that one. I'd have some with you if for the only reason yeah, I could actually taste I that's it. That's why I'm not gonna I waste whiskey when I can't enjoy it. Uh, that's why I haven't been drinking a whole lot. <laughs> well, I like you do what you're gonna do. I like it better. Yeah. When there's company, too hard. Stop, 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 stop. All right. Yeah, I mean, there definitely, there's definitely something to be said that there are occasions where we go a little overboard. <laughs> that, is, that is a true statement. I mean, I don't have to drive, so that makes it easier for me to go overboard, but it also means that I get back inside, I'll grab something to eat, and then after that, it's like, yeah. If it's 7.30 and I'm practically sleeping on my couch, that's usually a pretty good indication. 22 feet, a little uphill. All right, Brandon. 
we got to start it right here. Yes. Oh, man. Nice save. Oh, no doubt. All right. I took my first dub for the day. Yep, we kept it in play. Now, now we'll see what we can do. Okay, so I don't have to see what I have to see in order to know where I got to aim here, right? Pretty much. Like, this is Kapalua, yes, on Wednesday, all over again. All right. All right, turnaround starts right here, Mike. Oh, way high. High and right like a monkey. Yeah, you'll be fine. Kick over. Yeah, that was a good bounce. Yep, you're right. I will be just dandy. Okay. I mean, one of the reasons why we came back here, one of the reasons why I recommended we come back here, is because I remember it, you know, being a Lynx course, it's a little bit more forgiving off the tee. I don't think either one of us has really had a drive that, well, you had one, I think, on, yeah, on well, last hole maybe even. But you had one drive that really got you otherwise. No, not so much. That one, yep. It was definitely a pull, but you're gonna get away with that just fine. Might find the rough though, with these firm fairways. But yep, pulled it, seven degree pull. So that's very reminiscent, Michael, of me yesterday, or on Wednesday, and you can go back to YouTube and find it if you want. I wouldn't recommend it if you don't wanna see somebody <laughs> pull the ball six, seven, eight, nine degrees all around. Like I was just disc and frickin' bobulated. Okay, so obviously this hole, this green, falls off a freaking cliff into a pond on the right. Um, I mean, because you can't even see the water from your position. Bill's sending me pictures of his food from Seattle. Shout out to Bill, who is hanging out in Seattle. Um, try to convince him to go to that bar in Seattle I love. We'll see if he actually gets there. Hopefully he does. Yeah. He should, because it's amazing. It is literally the best bar I've ever been to. All right. Nope. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, get down. Hang on, get down, down. Down, 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 down. Okay, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. I am all over the map on the club face. <laughs> Speaking of bars, Mike, I heard, I wrote it down. I couldn't tell you what it's called right now, though. But I wrote it down the other day. Somebody recommended me another bar in the Twin Cities. Oh, yeah? That we have to check out that apparently has an amazing cocktail regime going on. So, <laughs> something to keep in mind? Yeah. Next time I'm down in that neck of the woods, which isn't very often these days, it seems. That was my, oh my God, don't you dare go right swing, idiot. I mean, that's it's fine. It's just you're not going to make Birdie doing that. <laughs> Operation T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, goodness. Uh, anyways, uh, so Mike, you long ago recommended me a bar in St. Paul, actually, that I still haven't been to either, but that is also on my list, so... Uh. And I got to get this done one of these days, too, because there was another really nice bar in Minneapolis, and I never got a chance to go, and then COVID, and it got wiped out. I feel like I missed out. The real problem with going with a really, oh, a little short. The real problem with going to a really nice, like, cocktail bar, though, is that you really got to be, like, not driving. Yeah. Which is kind of a problem. So, like, when I was in, like, t talking about, like, being in Seattle, right? Like, yeah, no, that was great because it's like, I don't have a car. Drink as much as you want. But you can't really do that when you're in the cities and you're driving your own vehicle. 51 feet. Boy, it seemed like I've had a lot of these tonight. Not hard enough. 
go, 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 go. Well, it was not hard enough, but good enough. I made par the moment I hit that shitty second shot. Okay, crap. Work to do. Just a fucking ball. Tish harder you had that. I know. And now we get to a 227 yard par three. <sighs> Fuck All right, awesome. time to get out the lumber, baby. Oh, oh, I gotta change this here. This is ridiculous. More dovetail. <laughs> <laughs> Bring out the Highland, Highland Park, baby. <laughs> Burn it down. <laughs> Get out the black hammer. Crap! Oh my gosh, Mike, I got, no, stop! Okay, no matter how bad my shot is, I got better than I deserved. <laughs> I did not know there was a gap in the woods when I dead pull cranked that thing off the toe. <laughs> so, oh, crap. All right, fine. Fine, that's fine. Uh, yeah, no, that's, that's a problem. That's problematic, a little problematic. <laughs> a little problematic. Yeah, I have a, uh, um, I'm going to that far north tasting here in a couple weeks. Oh yeah? So I better get my goddamn sense of taste back by then. No, oh, my don't go where, where I went. No, whole club slipped in my hands. Oh really? Oh, that sucks. Get through it all. completely turned. That'll do it every time. Good news is you and me both got away with it. In a sense that we both, uh, we both have an option. Yeah. When in reality, neither of us deserved one. <laughs> I mean, you're in the deep rough, so you're probably a little worse off than I am, but I don't know. I think, I think both those shots, the moment I saw them, I'm like, yeah, we're in the woods. In the freaking woods. Stay there. Well, that's a deep rough. I'm assuming that got you there. Okay, and I've got a tree behind me, but I have to assume it's behind me. So 36, I'm in a rough lie. 4.3 degrees to the right. Yeah, it's behind me. I can't aim any further there though, because I've got a giant freaking limb there. 36. striking distance yeah. that needed about another half a foot and you had it all right sticking bogey eight feet well this is a hard hole though right 220 par three with woods up the entire left side that's a big ask So th that one, I guess I'll, yeah, feel, feel good about that outcome, I guess. But I feel like I'm already running out of holes here and we still got a lot of holes left, but I still feel like I'm running out of holes. Mike's got a mount a comeback from that last course where he was three or four down and came raging back. Nice putt, which he did successfully. I way under. Oh! Okay. Way under attack. <laughs> All right. Well, if I wouldn't have looked back, I'd have said nice butt. Had I looked back, I'd have been like, well, I guess you made it. <laughs> it's 
That's about what I was thinking. I'm good outcome. <laughs> Jesus. All right. That was fucking disgusting. Get lucky. Ah, it ain't gonna be lucky. Stay out of that bunker, but it ain't gonna, no. It's gonna go in there. All right, I deserve it. I deserve it. Shoot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, Piper Dog. You keep things interesting, kiddo. I'll grant that premise. Hmm? And Mike loses it the opposite way that I did. And he's going to definitely be worse the fuck off than I am, that's for sure, because the woods has got to be worse than the bunker bullshit lie I'm going to get stuck with. Ooh. Now we're getting to that back nine, round two blues. Now we're getting to that back nine where it's like, yep, you've already played a lot of holes. It's turning into a thing. Oh. Just losing the swing completely. Oh, dick. So I finally looked at Bill's, uh, food pitcher he sent me, but now I understand why he sent it to me. He's at, he, they're, out, they're eating at some kind of like um, seafood boil. No. Oh. Which of course, that'd be pretty amazing. I missed the one we had at my local Muni because nobody wanted to come with. And I didn't want to go eat, uh, uh, you know, an unhealthy amount of food by myself. <laughs> I figured that'd look a little desperate. <laughs> They're like, what's this guy doing there by himself? It's like, oh, he's just eating food till he can't feel feelings. Just send him another drink. It'll be fine. Be kind of a thing. That being said, though, Chef John was telling me they were thinking about doing it again, which if they did, like, that'd be amazing. I'd love to get you guys all to come with. That'd be fun. Doing a Cajun style. Holly, be enough, please. If it was Cajun style, it'd be me, the wife will and not. <sighs> that was a fucking gross shot again by Team Brandon, who is now burying his club in the mat at every opportunity. Megan doesn't like, what, Cajun food? No, of any spicy kind? food. Ah, I see. Cajun food can be spicy at times. This is true. And that, yeah, that would... Yeah, they've had a, they did their chef series this winter again, which is fun. But uh, they just haven't had one I've really wanted to go to. Go, go, yeah, it's such a deep green. I did the same thing you did. You you caught yours on the hosel though. That's why you lost some yards. Whereas I uh, buried mine in the mat and caught it fat. Come on, get us get off the yeah. These over. frickin'. Greens, dude. Um, yeah, I, um, although they have one coming up that was mildly interesting to me. It was elevated pub food. So it was, I think, a three-course menu for elevated pub food, which sounded good to me. But obviously the one I went to, I was pretty well judged. The one I went to, obviously, was the one where it was like, um, you know, it was because of that whiskey cocktail pairing and yeah. all that stuff, because obviously that was something I was pretty uh, stoked about. Oof, 
and would do again if I had the opportunity in a heartbeat. Like that was a lot of fun. Yeah. But um, but just going to a chef's dinner where it's just food, even if they do wine pairings and stuff like that, it's still that's a harder sell for me. Where obviously if it's whiskey, then it's like okay, well yeah, no, duh, I'm going. Oh. oh, I'm very pleased with that. Nice. Very pleased with that. Um, speaking of things, Mike, uh, if you, uh, <laughs> if you, um, so I was supposed to go to an event here a week or two ago. It was uh, bourbon and barbecue. Yeah. And it's exactly what you think it was. It was uh, five bourbons, I think, with some barbecue food. And I was supposed to go. It was supposed to be me and my brother-in-law, but of course, obviously, I had COVID and I was, unable to attend but they're doing another one here in a few weeks so now you got to go all the way down to horse for it but i think it would be uh i think it'd be a lot of fun and so nice putt nice putt oh, i would have missed that if i would have hit it straight <laughs> so the lineup uh, let's see, the lineup was, right, yeah, that's what they poured it for the bourbon. And obviously it wasn't all bourbon because apparently that freaking Angel's Envy was that, that rye that's really like sweet dessert-like rye. Yeah. Which is great because that's way more... That's like a hundred dollar bottles. So that's fun to go out and try that versus drinking the normal Angel's Envy, which I, again, I like Angel's Envy. In fact, I even have a bottle. In fact, it might even be out here, but this feels doable to me, Michael, because of how far it's downhill Piper. and how firm the fairways are. This doesn't feel like impossible. All right, this is where I get my stroke back on the field right here. No way right. Dang it. Golly, could not close that face to save my fucking life. Stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'm dead. I'm going to be behind those giant ass trees. You watch. I'm going to have no chance at that green. All right, put you back in here so I don't forget about you. But anyways, um, I should find out. I should actually find out if he bought tickets to that for me. And then I should find out when it is and see if you guys wanted to come with. Because that would be a, a dab -a -doo good time, I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, they're doing another one. 25th of January is when it is, apparently. I'll have to look at the calendar. Yeah. But yeah, it's all the way down in Horace, though. Oh, take a big kick over there. It has to. Yep, look at this. So you're going to be down in that hollow, I assume. I remember this green, though. Because remember last time we played this, I think I drove it right just even a little bit past where you... Oh, yeah, look at this. I'm completely fucking dead. Completely fucking dead. All right, so my goal now is to just find some part of this green, leave myself an 80-foot putt. And then just try to get um, a two putt, get a par in what should be a very easy hole, and live to fight another day. That is my plan. You said the 25th? I think it is. January? Guessing a Thursday, if I had to speculate. Yep, it is. And Megan's on call. So, gee, I I'm out. <laughs> well, and there goes that. Did I get over it? I did. Okay. All right, so exactly as I indicated, everybody, I am going to hit a shot. I am going to be a long way away. I'm going to two putt. I'm going to get a par. I'm going to run off this hole. Because that's about the only option I gave myself off the tee there. Now, oh. Now oh, I have to carry this. <laughs> so yeah, of the ones that they poured, right? Like, so obviously, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Basil Hayden, generally speaking. Um, so there's, they even had pricing on these. I could have bought some. 
That basil hidden in a red wine cask was interesting idea to me. Yeah. And then, but but of the ones I nearly bought, ooh, look at that, nice shot. I nearly bought that High West. I've never thought of that Rendezvous Rye. I've never, I don't know if I've seen that on a shelf. Mm. But but the tasting yeah. notes, raspberry, jalapeno, jelly, orange slices, dates, and cinnamon in a rye. Yeah, fuck you, I'd buy a bottle of that. Because that just sounds too interesting not to try. Yeah. I never did ask Mike what he thought of that one, though. So I'll have to bother him the next time I see him. All right, Brandon. 48 bloody feet. But this one is actually downhill. I've always had these two, three, freaking four foot uphill putts. Piper. Piper, go, go hang out with Mike. Come here. Come here. Shout out to my dog, which apparently I just got a text message. He now has Gap clothing. So how about that for him, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> Trendy dog. Hold it. Get to that hill and go. Get to that hill and go. So that's how much I underread that, is that I pulled it and I still ended up way to the right. All right. That's exactly what I predicted was about to happen. So I'm okay with that outcome. All right. You don't want to do that? Hit a drive better. <laughs> Too much pace for that one. What you thought? of the rendezvous. Come on, say me. Say me, autocomplete. Nope, you're not going to. You're gonna, you're gonna F me. <laughs> okay, question out to my brother-in-law. I'm curious. All right. I remember this one now. Four that holes left. That runs across the middle. I think you're right. I think this was the one where it's like you want to get close to it, but you don't want to drive it into the damn thing. Yeah. All right, four holes left. Seven strokes between us, so that's a mountain to climb, no doubt. But I also need two strokes back in these last four holes if I want to knock that number down on the board. Come here, Piper. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're fine. This is getting fucking frustrating. Yeah, no, I'm toast. I can't, uh, I can't close the club face anymore. I can't get the club around my body fast enough anymore. Just dipping everything and hanging it out there and I, I can't get it to come back around. All right, shoot, shoot, shoot. So I'm dead again. So yet again now I have to just try to find a way to see if I can save a par somehow. A challenge nonetheless. All right, Mike, here's your chance. Get yourself a birdie here. You might get two strokes back right here. It ain't over. That just sounds fucking disgusting. I don't know why it sounds so bad. No. But that being said, though, I mean, that's a great shot. It's exactly where you want to be. Just short of that bunker, it's exactly what we talked about. And you striped it in the middle of the club. So I don't know why it sounded so, oh yeah, Jesus H fucking Christ. Oh brother, I deserve this, so this is fair. Um, oh, oh, oh. oh man, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna do now. I just don't know. I don't know if the face is cracked on the inside or what. I mean, can I get over all of that? Or do I not even risk it and just try to hit myself to safety here? I feel like I have to hit myself to safety here. I feel like the only thing I can't do here is double, triple, quadruple bogey this fucking thing. Yeah. Like that's just, 
that's game over, man. Like, even if I bogey this, that's pretty tough to come back from, but it ain't impossible. Come here, Piper. I double bogey this thing, it's just, it's over. Piper. All right, deep rough. We're playing for par here on this hole. Okay, that's a, probably about as good as I could have struck it, and yep, I'm out in the fairway. All right, up and down for par. All I can do. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah, the driver has betrayed me now these last few holes. So, just wasn't able to keep it going. But I'm not dead yet. I ain't dead yet, Piper. I ain't dead yet, bud. <laughs> what are you saying? Are you saying I want to bite my earlobe? Yeah, owie, thanks. <laughs> I wanted my ears not on, like one of those treats you can buy. What a fucking dick. Ugh. Oh, nope. Right. So I can't wait for the text message from the uh, construction crew working on my house. Not only did they not get the lights put on, because I can see the wires hanging out of my house yet at 411. So not only did they not get that done, but at the same time, um, they put together, they took apart my dog fence so they could walk back and forth, put it back together, and took away the big chunk of wood that was laying against it uh, that was keeping him from uh, escaping through one of the gaps. So, like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Piper, come here. All right, 35, up and down for par. That is the plan. Day night chip and putt, baby. Too soft, go. Too soft, go. Go, go, I can go F my, s oh no. Wow. That sucks. That sucks. Dang it. Look at that, Mike. I mean, maybe I should, I'm not even gonna be on the green. Not even gonna be on the green. Yeah, fuck this. Fuck this, I guess. Wow. That's brutal, folks. I mean, I, no one to blame but myself because I should have hit the uh, heat map. Saw there was a giant ridge there and I should have erred on the side of being long, but I, I didn't and I guess I can go fuck myself. Yeah, don't miss left, Mike. Good, good job. <laughs> don't miss left, otherwise you'd be down by me. I mean, yeah, look at that, like, I guess I should have looked at that and saw that. But even then, I don't know if I would have, I don't know if I would have done anything different. I mean, I hit the shot I hit, I just hit a little soft. Yeah. So. Oh, visions of Kapalua again, rolling through my head of another one where, a Kapalua, I two chip from here on a, on a chip just like this. I pulled the bejeebers out of that, but whatever, that's fine, it's up there. So, game over I fear for me though, because that means I'm gonna have to birdie out, and I'm not good enough to get that done right now, I doubt. We'll see. I don't remember what the last few holes here look like though. I would need some, uh, I would need some gimmies. Can I get a couple of layup holes up in this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good shot for you here though again. This thing ain't over if Mike can apply a little pressure, and he does right there by making a par. All right, so I gotta make this putt just to only lose one to Mike. Otherwise, I lose two to him, and if I lose two to him on every hole, I'll lose this thing at the end of it. All right, seven feet. There you go. All right. I've gotta pull that driver out of the ass. You're not the only one. I mean, I still could have saved that one, but obviously I didn't know about that hill until after I hit my chip shot, so whoops. All right, but here we go, though. Par five. Uh, it's not a layup par five, but uh, it's a par five, so reasonable to assume this can be done. I have to birdie out now if I want to be on the board. Mike is, oh, God, yeah. I remember this one. This one goes up that Mondo Hill at the end. Yeah. Cool. Wow. 
I do think this golf course is appropriately named because if you think about, well, this is actually gonna be just fine. In fact, I'd argue you might actually be in pretty good shape if it stays on top of whatever the hell ridge this we're gonna call this. What the fuck? Hmm. So you got 260 and you will be on top of a ridge so you won't have to hit it way up a hill. So that won't be too bad. I don't know what's up with that driver. Neither do I, it sounds funny to me though. Whatever that's worth, right? All right, get your freaking club around the body and close this club face. Or just hit a mondo, mondo cut. Just pull across it trying to save it. <laughs> oh man. No, don't run over there. Why are you going over there? <laughs> okay. All right, you first. I am a little closer, but. Oh, brother. But it ain't gonna matter though, because yeah, I mean, I'm eight yards closer, but you are eight yards further uphill. So in reality, we're basically about the same distance away. opportunity me on the other hand I'd argue I don't think I have much of a shot here because I even though these things are firm even if I hit this good I just don't <laughs> think it's gonna roll up that hill I think the best I could hope for would be the same outcome Mike had there that'd be the best opportunity oh no Wow double cross stop Oh my God, what am I in there? Okay, so I'm in deep rough, even though it doesn't look like deep rough. That explains why it stopped bouncing. So that's a um, mismatch in the visuals. Yeah. Um, which, you know, fine, that's fine. I don't really, okay, I don't need to get rid of the background. I can see already from here that it's gone. The real question is just how much is that gonna, how much deep rough is gonna get me there? So the good news is at least I know it's deep rough. So that won't surprise me at least. All right, I need to get up and down to have any opportunity here to make the board. tried. <laughs> Maximum effort, ladies and gentlemen. Are you guys not entertained? Maximum effort. All right, Brandon needs this in order to keep the dream alive. I was close. I needed to go further outright.
suspect it's because as the loudest idiot in here voice wise my mic is doing extra work <laughs> so I think that's the reason why mine's always the one that keels over first all right Come here. 21 
catch a, oh, I don't want to putt. I really don't want to putt right now. <laughs> it is not my thing. Not my thing. Can I get some lab gimmies up in here, please? <laughs> oh, Jesus, that one's fucking hard in the heartbeat. Piper. Hey, no. All right. What do you do with this? But yeah, tough par three. Um, I think we've had two 200 plus par threes and this one was 190, so definitely had some yeah. par threes on this one. A substantial length. Wow, nice putt, Mike. Oh my God, wow. if, Mike, <laughs> if Mike could have just pitched putt for me, if I could have called it a pinch hitter, <laughs> had Mike make some putts for me, golly, I'd have been much better off. Look at this roly poly bastard of a pin position again. I know. Have not been very kind to us in that regard, have they? I don't wanna play that much break, cause I'm gonna have to kinda hit this thing forcefully, I think is the word I'll use. Yep. Okay. Mike can keep the box going into the last. Last hole, folks. Hey. Stop it, there's nothing in that water other than your snout. <laughs> Trust me. All right, so last hole, and uh, yeah. If I hole in one from the, from the driver, <laughs> I still wouldn't be under par, <laughs> so. All right, so all I gotta do is try to, try to do my level best to stay out of the Cuervo zone. Because if Mike holes out from the fairway and I go into the Cuervo zone, then uh, technically we'd have a tie game. <laughs> That'd be a hell of an ending. I'd have to fucking clip that one. All right, there you go, Mikey. Ooh, nice bounce, too. See, that one didn't feel clicky, though. I don't know. That's kind of weird. So thank you, everybody, on the hate, Piper. Thank you, everybody, on the internet for watching, as always. Hopefully, with me being over COVID now, hopefully, we will uh, be back to more of a regular schedule, which would be awful swell. big pole. Got away with it though. Yeah, you did. Get over that big hill then. Get over that big hill. Get over that big hill and get down there. It ain't going to get down, is it? Nope. Nope. That'll be fine though. So yeah, hopefully we'll be on a, hey, back off, off the green stuff. Yeah, hopefully we'll be back to more of a regular schedule, doing our thing, so on and so forth. Um, I can already see this one. Don't be short. Yeah, I think you're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that transition from like dark orange to yellow just instantly, right? That tells you that it's like, there's a cliff there. There is a cliff there we have to, have to beware. That sounded good. It's on a line too. Is it enough to carry the cliff? Oh yeah. Is it enough to carry the cliff? Is it enough to carry the, nope. Nope. Mike can go fuck himself. <laughs> Thought I had enough. Wow. Don't be sure. Freaking brutal. <laughs> Freaking brutal, folks. I thought I had enough on that one. I thought you had enough, too, until it checked, and I'm like, nope. <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, wow. Look at that. I have almost seven feet uphill in 22 yards. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Abandoned Trails, baby. <laughs> All right, we're not taking any off this club. We're just going to hit her full. If we, got, if we only get to this flag, we fucked up. Tried to hoist it past. Did I get it past? Oh, nope. no. <laughs> I can go F myself. <laughs> Damn it. It's turn to go down the happy trail. <laughs> yeah, well, you and me both. You and me both. Hey, I had a chip that was to seven feet <laughs> and I was not on the green. So, yeah, been there, done that, bud. I paid my dues <laughs> as well. All right, well, you first up the mountain and then I will follow you. Yeah, folks, it has been a struggle bus <laughs> in this regard. 
But uh, yeah, thank you everybody for uh, for watching. It's always fun to get a chance to uh, come play some golf and talk to everybody. Nice to see you again, Dutch, as well. We'll see you again uh, soon, I'm sure. <sighs> Me and Mike just trying to stay out of the Cuervo Too zone. Much. Mike did exactly what you have to do, which is <laughs> be long, idiot. It's what we should have did off the thing. I took plenty of club, though, Mike. I just, well, so did I. I took or I thought time. anyways, but in reality, no. I should have taken one more and just Operation Piss Pound. I took too much off. Hey, don't bite your mat. Gets me out of the putter. <laughs> that was a par. Good God. <laughs> that felt like some work, folks. Yep. That felt like some work. It did. Oh, good. They're back. God, I don't even know how much I want to play off of this. <laughs> eh, it's only a foot. Yeah. Ah. Piper, 44 okay. feet. I want to do like 30. <laughs> Just don't go long. Just don't go long. Yep. Okay. Mike says no. Oh shit. All right. Well, that, Girl. folks, was a struggle. Um, I mean, 37, 39 on the front, Mike. So we got there, and it was work to be done, but it wasn't impossible. But then 37, 41 on the back, won't cut it. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a tricky challenge. Brandon, 13 pars, had a 301 drive though, nine, 50% greens, 50, ugh, that's not particularly good, and this, 30 putts, owie, owie, owie. Mike, on the other hand, another 300 yard drive as well, had, his, had the only double I think we saw all day. I had 29 putts, and I had a shit ton of fairways though. Fairways better. <laughs> had a shit ton of fairways, even with your goofy sounding driver. Yeah. But yeah, the greens and rag, you and me both were locking in that regard. Mm-hmm. 91 feet of putts, though, again. Course, zero. What was that? Oh, I was looking at the elevation. I'm sure. Course. Yeah, it's, uh, we had a challenge today. We had a challenge today, folks. Yeah. And, of course, it being the second round. It being the second round always makes it more difficult because you slowly but surely lose control over what might be going on. Well, guess what? Mine kicked out too. <laughs> yes, sir. Hello. Give me a second. I'll be right with you. All right. I got to take off too. So on behalf of Mike and Brandon, we'll see you guys another time. Latest.